How's it going everybody? My name's Connor and welcome back to yet another video here on my channel. Today I got a really fun video for you guys. I think you're gonna love it. Now, a couple days ago, I hit up the studio with an old friend of mine and together we worked together to create a really cool old school type look with a real simple lighting setup. Now, I didn't actually record any footage of the shoot itself, but stick with me and I'm gonna go over my entire lighting setup, my thought process as I went through the photo shoot, and there's an entire et full editing tutorial at the end of the video. So come with me and let's do it. All right, so like I said, a good friend of mine was in town this past weekend and we decided to take advantage of the time that she was in town to head to my studio and shoot. Now her name is Renee. She's a crazy talented photographer herself. I'll go ahead and link all of her information down below in the description. But at the end of the day, we decided that instead of shooting together, we're gonna do a photo shoot with her as the model. So I got out my Canon 5D Mark III with my trusted 85 millimeter 1.8 lens. You guys have seen that lens before. And for this entire shoot, we're gonna be using Profoto packs with a Profoto light, as well as Lumo Pro mod modifiers. All right, so this entire shoot was just totally improvised. We did not plan it. We had no idea what we we're gonna do going into it. So the first thing we decided that we we're gonna do is that because she was wearing all black, we thought it would be a pretty cool look if we used an all black background as well. We soon found that going along with that look, shooting for kind of an old school vintage type look could give us a real unique feel that we thought we were really gonna love. Renee has a really cool look and with the lighting setup that I had in mind, I thought that the shoot could kind of turn out to be a really cool, unique, romantic vibe. So we got all the paper background set up and then I went ahead and I set Renee up on the paper and obviously the first thing I decided to set up was my main light. And for my main light, because Renee was standing up on the paper, I went for a vertical strip box. And on that strip box, I decided that I was going to put a grid on it because I wanted her to be totally illuminated, but I didn't want any of that light to spill off the side and illuminate my background. I wanted my background to be very dark and very moody. So I took that light and I went ahead and I put it over to camera right so, so it would totally illuminate the entire left side of her body. Now I knew that if I did that, that her left side would be totally illuminated and her right side would be in complete shadow with a really hard fall off. So I took a white piece of cardboard and propped that up to her right, camera left, so that it would bounce some light back into her and fill in those shadows on the right side of her body. At that point, I was really liking how it was looking. I think it looked pretty cool, but I definitely think that she needed some sort of prop to make the whole thing more interesting and a, le and a little more intriguing. So we looked around the studio and we ended up finding this really, really cool sofa that has just an amazing old school look that was exactly what we were looking for. And once we put that on set and she laid down on it, we knew that we were getting somewhere. But after a quick test shot, I soon realized that I didn't really like how much she was blending into the background. She was wearing all black and the shot itself was pretty dark. She was completely blending in with that background. So I decided that I would take a second light and prop it up behind her to camera left with a tiny little strip box on it. And on that strip box, I put a grid on that one as well so that none of the light from that box would spill into the rest of the photo where I didn't want it. And I pointed that soft box directly at her back so that it would illuminate, illuminate the right side of her hair, her back, as well as the side of the sofa. And basically all that did was it just gave her and the sofa a great separation for the background so you could see her a little bit better and it didn't look like a floating head with nothing else. After another quick test shot, I absolutely loved how it was looking and that second light was definitely much needed. As we started to play around and shoot some more, we slowly realized that shooting in black and white would be much better suited for this shoot. And once we did that, we absolutely loved it. We realized we were getting somewhere. We realized we had the lighting down and we had a look that we really enjoyed. So we just ran with it and we started shooting. Now, as far as her posing went, we were going for more of a romantic feel, but kind of somber at the same time. The most successful poses were the ones that showed constraint and hesitation. She came off as thoughtful and intellectual, but lonesome and tired at the same time. With some creative editing, I knew that I could give the shots a unique old school feel. In the end, we couldn't have been happier with the photos we got. Now after no more than like an hour of shooting, we had a ton of shots and I wanted nothing more than just to get home, get to editing and see how they all looked. Now that leads me to right now with you guys, so how about we turn around, get into Photoshop and get some editing done. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've pulled in all of the photos that we took from our shoot. As you can see, we didn't take too many. It was a pretty concise shoot. 
And like I said before, I'm really liking how the photos turned out. I think it's a really successful shoot and I'm excited to show you guys my edit process. Now, I actually ended up editing a couple already. You can see what the look I'm kind of going for. This one I already edited as well as this one. I'm really happy how they turned out. I love the old school black and white type feel and I'm excited to show you guys how I did it. So I've already gone ahead and brought one photo into Photoshop for our editing today. And I absolutely love this photo. It's a little different compared to the rest of the ones from the shoot, but I think it just tells a story and I love it when photos tell a story and there's so much deeper meaning to it. You look at this photo and it just leaves you thinking, you know, what happened? What's she doing there? What is she going to do? What she's thinking? And that's why I went ahead and I picked this as one of my, uh, one of my favorites that I'm gonna go, go ahead and edit for you guys in this video. And as you can see in this photo, it's a great representation of our lighting setup that I just got done explaining to you guys. So you can see all along the side of her body, this is from the main light, the main strip box that I, was just, that I just got done telling you guys about. And then this light here on her hair, this is from the back light that I have coming from behind. And you can clearly see that if this light wasn't there, her hair would have totally just blended in with the background and it wouldn't have been as successful as a shot because I think her hair in this photo really makes this shot so much more interesting. Anyways, let's get to the edit. Now I've already gone ahead and I've duplicated my background layer so I can start my edits on a fresh layer and I'm free to go back. Um, and if I don't like any of my edits, I can go back to my original. And the first thing I'm going to do is retouch her skin a little bit. Now Renee has really, really great skin, so all I'm really going to do is come in on the face a little bit and maybe touch up a little bit of these hairs here, maybe some of the glare here on her skin, and maybe just, and maybe just a couple of these wrinkles that were just caused because of the way she was kind of smiling. I'm also going to go into areas like up here where maybe some of the shadows might not be too flattering and they might be hitting her skin just the wrong way. So I'm just going to go ahead and touch those up a little bit as well. So if I center her face here, the tool I'm going to use for this is the patch tool. And for those of you who have seen uh, some of my other videos, you'll know that I absolutely love the patch tool. It is an amazing tool. I love it so much. The shortcut on your keyboard is just J to access it. But anyways, for those of you who haven't seen me use the patch tool, it's super easy. I love how to use it. All you do is just, you select it, you make a circle around anything you want to remove, click and drag to a nearby area, and look at that, deselect, and it completely removes any sort of uh, imperfection or little blemish that you want to get rid of. You're basically just telling the computer that this area that I circle, I want to replace that with an area nearby and it samples from all the layers to make it a seamless, beautiful transition so it looks like you didn't do anything in the first place. Again, I really don't see too much that I have to touch up. Her skin and her makeup looks really fantastic, but again, some of these hairs I'm gonna get rid of, uh, as well as some of these shadows down here. So I'm gonna go in ahead and fast forward this video just a little bit as I go ahead and work with this patch tool. I'll meet back with you guys in just a couple seconds. and I'm just gonna jump in here real quick. So obviously everybody has a completely different workflow, their way of doing their workflow when they're doing some sort of editing just like this. So everyone can do it a different way. Um, for some people, for a hair situation like this, they might choose to use, instead of the patch tool, they'll use the clone tool. Now that shortcut is S on your keyboard or it's just this tool right over here. And very similarly to the patch tool, you're just basically sampling another part of the photo to replace with wherever you want it. So if I just wanted to draw, draw over the hair here, I would just come over here and select a different part of the skin. I might lower my opacity just a little bit, select a really nearby area and just paint over it a little bit. Now, I don't think this is the best way of doing this personally, but I just wanted to show you guys that you can do this as well. And it doesn't look perfect. I'd go ahead and touch that up a little bit, but I'm gonna back up in my history up here and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this with the patch tool because I think that's what I'm a little bit more comfortable with. So again, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit, touch up this hair, maybe touch up her shoulder a little bit, and I'll tune back in with you guys in just a second. All right, 
right, so that's looking pretty good. Again, all I did was just removing some of those little tiny imperfections that were caused be, uh, thanks to the lighting. Um, nothing really big. We're going to get into some uh, more advanced skin toning here in a little bit. One thing I am going to do real quick while I'm on the same, same layer where I'm just editing out some little imperfections is I'm going to take care of some of these flyaway hairs here. And I'm just going to do that with the clone stamp like I showed you before. And this is going to be a real easy fix because we're dealing with a plain black background here. And so all we need to do is just select a nearby point here and just paint over with black. You could even paint over this with the black, uh, the black paintbrush if you wanted to, but I'm just trying to make sure I stay more true to the background that I used. So I'm just going to go through here, sample the black, and paint over some of these flyaways just to make, you know, this hair that's in highlight just a little bit more appealing. You know, up here where we have some flyaways, make her hair look really nice and pretty. Yep, just like that. Just check for any more flyaways that we might have missed. And no, I think that looks really good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is kind of a personal touch of mine that I like to do for a lot of the photos that I take. Um, I don't know many other people that do it. You don't have to do it by any means, but it's just something that I like to do. And I think it's something that makes the photo overall a little bit more flattering and a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer again. So we're working on a fresh layer and I'm going to go to filter and liquify. And plenty of you have probably used the liquify tool before. Let me just move my screen over here. Sorry, it popped up on my other screen. And what I like to do is I like to just edit how the hair looks just a little bit. I think editing the hair can do a lot for a photo. Maybe it's just me, but sometimes I make the hair bigger. Sometimes I make it smaller. So in this case, I might just bring down the hair a little bit, make it, make it look a little bit more smooth and, you know, flush against her head. And I might take some of these little pieces here, not like that, and maybe just extend them a little bit. I don't want to do it too much because obviously it's affecting her skin as well, her back. But I think that if I lower this hair just a little bit, make it look like it's a little longer, a little richer, a little thicker, I think that'll do wonders for the shot. And just that's a little tiny thing that you can do, but I think it'll make the world of difference. So just hit OK on that. And that's it. You can see the before and after here, not a big deal, but it just changed it a little bit. Just a personal thing of mine, not a big deal, but I like to do it. All right, and now we are ready for the fun part, or at least what I like to call the fun part, and that is at really editing the skin and just make it look a lot more flattering. Now, we're not going to go, you know, old school for the high school senior portraits where they make, they completely smooth out your skin, they lose all detail, and they make it look like you're a porcelain doll. We're not going to do anything like that. I think her skin looks fantastic. There's little we need to do to it. We definitely want to keep all the texture to the skin, but I definitely want to smooth some of the tonal range and the shadows and the highlights, and that's what I'm here to do. So my favorite method for doing that is called frequency separation. Now frequency separation, it's a pretty complicated technique. It's really not that complicated at the root, but on its face value it is. Now you guys can go ahead and check out tons of YouTube videos on the internet explaining how to do frequency separation. I'm not going to explain to you how to do it today, but let me know in the comment section below if you guys want me to make a video on that. If you enjoy what I do here, maybe I'll make that video in the future. And basically all we're doing for this frequency separation technique is we're taking all the textures from the photo and separating the textures from the rest of the photo so that we can blur the rest of the photo and not the textures. So if we blur everything but the textures, that's the tones, the tonal range, uh, things like that, then it'll smooth out, it'll look a lot more silky, a lot smoother, but since we're not directly editing the texture, the texture of the skin won't be lost and, it'll, and she'll still look like a real human being and not a porcelain doll, which is what we want to do. We don't want to completely Photoshop her to oblivion and make her look like a magazine cover or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish retouching her skin here, and I will tune in with you guys in one second.
I've gone ahead and I've finished up all my blending of the tones in this shot, and I think it's really coming together and really looking great. Now again, this is the technique that lots of high-end photo retouchers use, and it's not to make the skin look like porcelain or super airbrushed, it's to maintain that texture while just blending the tones in the photo so that the skin looks a lot more appealing, a lot silkier and smoother, but not losing any of that texture. So if we zoom in here, you can see all the texture in her back here, all the pores and pores in her face, on her nose, on her makeup, all the little details in there you can see. And that is something we would have totally lost if we just went and we airbrushed over all of her skin. And if we select these two layers and group them and turn it on and off, you can see what a difference that made. So if I zoom in on her face here and turning it, turn it on and off, you can see how big of a difference we, it made. If you, especially if you look here in her nose, you know, it didn't, we didn't lose any of those textures, but we took those discrepancies and all the highlights and the shadows, blending them together a little bit, and overall it looks just fantastic. So I'm going to zoom out again, and since I'm very happy with how that's looking, I'm going to go ahead and select these two layers, and I'm going to merge them. I know a lot of people have a problem with merging layers, and they don't like that very much, but if I particularly enjoy how something looks, and I know that I would never go back and change that, I'll go ahead and merge them just to save myself some organization and some space. Next up is my second favorite thing to do in Photoshop, and that is dodge and burn. Now you all know what dodge and burn is, I'm not going to spend time explaining that to you, so I'm just going to go into areas like her face, I'm going to lighten up some of the highlights, darken some of the shadows, for example in her cheekbones here, if I lighten her cheekbone and darken the area underneath, it's going to just make her cheekbones explode with life with her back. I'm going to dodge and burn quite a bit here where her collarbone is, make that really dramatic and pronounced. I might dodge and burn a little bit of the sofa here to make it look a little cooler. And finally, her hair. I'm definitely going to bring out some of the exposure in her hair, the highlights in her hair, just to make it pop, and maybe tone down the shadows just a little bit to just make it that much more rich. So give me a minute to do a little bit of dodging and burning, and I'll meet you guys back here in one second. So I've gone ahead and I've spent no more than like two, three minutes dodging and burning the photo just a little bit just to bring out those shadows and highlights and make the photo pop that much more. So if I turn this layer on and off, you can see, wow, look how much that is doing. Now I know this is also the frequency separation layer coming into effect as well, but you can see the highlights and the shadows are so much more pronounced and so much more beautiful. That's making the shot look absolutely fantastic. I'm actually going to make a couple more adjustments here, especially here with the sofa. Alright, I'm sorry, I just had to do a couple more things, I just had to do it. And finally, the last thing I think this photo needs is just a little bit of touch up to the blacks of the photo to give it that old school vintage look. Now all the old school vintage photos that we see, they're faded out a little bit because of how old they are, so all we have to do to achieve that look is to mute the blacks in this photo just a little bit. And to do that, you're gonna go up here to your, to your adjustments and make a curves layer. Now muting the blacks just a little bit is the easiest thing in the world to do with your curves layer. Just take your bottom corner here, drag it up just a tiny bit, and you can see your blacks just beginning to fade and move closer to gray tones. Just gonna move it up a tiny bit, then go just a little bit, maybe about 10% of the way up the line here, up the curve, and bring it back down just a tiny bit. Bring those blacks in just a little bit more, bump up that contrast, and then I might lower the opacity just a little bit of this layer, turn that on and off to see how it looks, and look at that. I think that's a really cool look that this photo definitely needs. I'm gonna add a layer mask real quick, go to my brush, and I think I'm just gonna mask in the edges just a little bit to bring some of it back in, give us a little bit sort of a natural vignette, I guess you could say, to bring some of those blacks in so that she can just really pop and stand out. And that's it, looking good. You could even go up to filter, noise, and add noise. And you could even add some noise to the shot to give it even more of an old school effect. Now you could bump it up, give it a lot of noise like that, make it look real grainy and filmy like the old days. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I might tone it down just a little bit. 
maybe just right there. Let's press OK and see how that looks. Yeah, and I'm really liking how that looks. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. Just adding a little bit of, a no of noise can help add to the kind of feel that we're going for with this photo. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Like I said, I just picked one single photo to edit for you. I went through it really, really quick. I haven't been sitting down for any more than like 10, 15 minutes now. For, an, for one photo editing it like this, that's really not that much time at all. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna touch up lots of the other images that we took from this shoot, pick some of my favorites, and I'll go ahead and put them on screen right now so that you guys can see some of my favorites. Let me know if you guys didn't understand anything that I went over in this editing tutorial. I know I moved quickly, I know I didn't really explain everything as well as I could have, so go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll respond to every single comment and question that you guys have. And that's pretty much it everyone. This shoot just goes to show that if you just get up, get out, and hit the studio with some good friends, you're bound to create some stunning shots that you just never expected you would get. Anyways, I won't take up any more of your time. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know Renee and I had a blast making these photos. If you use this lighting setup in the future, I'd love to know how it goes. Just let me know how it went in the comments below. I read every single comment for all of my videos. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button below. I would really appreciate that. And if you want to see more content in the future, hit that subscribe button while you're at it. And don't forget to follow us on social media. I'm gonna link all our information in the description below. You guys have a fantastic day.